Good morning, good evening, and good day. Welcome to Attack Power Gaming. Thank you so much for being here. Today, we're going into our next part of how not to suck at Steel Division 2 with the Artillery tab. We're going to be going over how to use that long-range tab to support your troops and gain more victories. If you enjoy this content, please consider dropping a like and subscribing to the channel for more strategy game content. Let's hop right in. So here we are in our artillery tab, in this case the Hermann Goring. We're going to be hopping around a little because no division has all the types of things we want to look at. So first we're going to start with our mortars. Mortars are extremely useful. They are an artillery piece you should consider bringing in most divisions because basically every division has them. So every division has an 81mm mortar. This is very effective. Consider taking this in every division. It's very useful. It's low cost. It can do a lot of damage. It has a solid range. It fires very quickly. It's relatively accurate for its caliber usually these work best in pairs I would consider always taking at least two mortars if you really want to use them effectively if you use two at a time it will suppress an infantry unit with one burst of the shells it fires five at a time so basically you'll get five volleys before you run out of ammo these guys are very effective consider using them in most decks these are the way they go you also most will find 120 millimeter warriors these are less effective why it does more damage it suppresses faster why wouldn't this be better the big difference is this 12 rounds per minute versus the 60 millimeters uh, 81 millimeters 17 rounds per minute that's a big difference for most skilled players the moment they see their troops being targeted by artillery they're going to retreat them move them which means you're not going to get that many shots on target so that five round per minute difference is noticeable in action so it's something to keep aware of while you do that now you also have these mortar half tracks these are fantastic why because they have a radio what does a radio do for our artillery this is a big deal any unit on the front line that has a radio trait so leaders or in this case some recon might have it projects an aura circle around themselves essentially making any artillery that attacks units within that circle far more accurate and fire and aim much faster those are the two things it does that's really important and as much as fire more accurate seems like the big one the alternative bonus which is firing more quickly is huge as well they're gonna aim faster it's gonna allow you to use your artillery more accurately and more deadly so make sure that you take advantage of that radio whenever possible so a mortar with a radio is just stupidly accurate you really want to use this the the difference is very noticeable between the radioed mortar and the unradioed mortar and the normal 81 millimeter mortar is effective there's nothing wrong with it but having two of these instead is just far and away f better use these when you have them access to them not many divisions have half track mortars but they when they do you want them uh in the allied divisions the americans have a lot of radio mortars radio mortars are just fantastic most divisions don't there's only a select few but when you can i highly suggest you use them so those are the mortars also in the artillery tab, you'll find two infantry units in basically every division you have the beobachter for the germans and you have the battery fear and this is basically your two-man recon squad and a leader unit that is basically just a couple rifles these i always take the rifle leader here why because it keeps my infantry tab open for actual fighting infantry it's basically four very easy leaders to have and usually they're cheap because i don't have a ton of artillery so this is a very cheap way to get some more artillery leaders i like to take them in b so you get four a very good use these are effective they're better than the two-man recon squad in the recon tab but it really comes down to your point usage and if you really want this unit at all so something to keep aware of now if you can sneak these guys into the back lines to provide accurate artillery fire on the opponent's artillery that's huge but that is tough to do so don't expect that to happen then we move on to our actual artillery pieces so these are our towed artillery pieces though things that have heavier calibers higher calibers can have infinite range so they have no range limit they can fire anywhere onto the map unlike the mortars that have a range limit so these can reach out to anywhere so in my mind i generally categorize these into three levels we have light artillery medium and heavy now all they're going to call all the artillery heavy in the game they'll call it all heavy but the truth is it's not anything below 100 millimeters so you'll see a lot of 76 millimeter artillery especially with the russians but it, also with the axis a couple divisions in the axis that's lighter artillery it, it's essentially a mortar in terms of damage but it can reach out and shoot anything they're usually unradioed the allies have the su-76 which is a self-propelled artillery gun it's a zis 3 that has a radio that that can be a very effective unit depending on how you use it then you have your medium artillery which is your 100 
and five millimeters, 100 to 105, 120, sometimes 110 in that zone, the low hundreds. These are your medium artillery pieces. And then you have your heavier artillery pieces, which is 150 millimeters and above, which we can see right here. Most German divisions have this 150 millimeter and have the 105 millimeter artilleries. It's kind of just the package that those divisions have. Most Russian divisions have some sort of 76 millimeter artillery, the lighter stuff, and then some heavier stuff in the up end. Now, in terms of this medium artillery, this there's a big difference between these two pieces here. The one on the right is the Lefebvre 18mm, uh, 18 millimeter, 18 M105 millimeter. I wouldn't take these. They're not very effective. Only 20% accuracy. Fires four rounds a minute. Very slow. On the other hand, if you look at the SK18 105 millimeter, and we look at this, okay, we're actually gonna click over to the HE shells to make sure we get the proper stats here. The SK-18 has so much more accuracy, over double the accuracy. It has two more rounds a minute. That's a huge deal. This weapon is very effective at countering enemy artillery because it can actually be accurate even without the radio. So that's huge. These are artillery pieces to consider taking if you're going to take heavier artillery. Then if you're going to really be doing artillery, you're going to want these 150 millimeter or bigger. Some divisions have 200 millimeter artillery. That's really fun to use. Very heavy, big booms when you use those. These can really reach out and do some heavy damage, but they're not as accurate. They're at the 20 percentile, so just be careful of that. There's a couple 149 millimeter stuff. These are generally more effective. This German uh, SFH-18, very solid artillery piece. I generally would bring them in C if I'm going to bring in artillery in a balanced deck, and always bring them with munitions whatever the munition is because they're going to eat up a lot of munitions and you don't want to have to go to your support tab to use those one thing i did forget to note for your mortars mortars cannot come in with supply so make sure that you have some sort of supply on hand for your mortars otherwise they're going to be useless after two or three minutes so keep that in mind when you're using those also in our artillery tab we have self-propelled artillery which is basically artillery that comes on a tank of some sort exact same gun as the normal 150 millimeter literally the same exact gun no difference the big advantage of using the self-propelled artillery is that it can move really quickly so it's very hard to counter battery now if you're not going to move this guy around then it's completely useless bring him in he's actually worse because you can't bring him in with supply that's the big difference is you have to bring in separate supply for your hummels and your wesps and any other self-propelled moving artillery but you get to move them so if you're planning to use them to destroy enemy artillery that can be really effective these while obviously you can counter battery opponents artillery with it are not as effective because they can't move and once they get suppressed they're very ineffective our next category in the artillery tab is off map everyone's favorite little weapon here now this is kind of an odd off map this is a massively huge this is double the size of even the biggest off maps this is a very odd one but off maps are basically several shot charged weapons here so what happens is plane flies over you call in it'll has a little circle and you have to get close enough to call the artillery in on the spot you'll see a green circle appear after about 30 seconds to a minute the artillery will start dropping from the sky essentially on top of those troops however many shells it says over here so in this case it's only dropping three shells but that's because they're 600 millimeter shells those are absurdly huge they will like erase anything in the zone so be careful when using this unit. Now, this comes with two charges. In other words, you can call in that off map two times. Lighter caliber off map gets more charges. So anything under 200 millimeters get three call-ins and anything above that generally has two with some exceptions, especially the Russians have some weird cheat things in there where they seem to get more than they should. In terms of the effectiveness of off map, 75 millimeters not very effective. Anything under 100 is not super effective. Low 100s is still not going to do a ton of damage, but it can be effective. The 200s in that 200 range, those tend to perform the most successfully. Those are very solid off maps. The true use of off map is to suppress your opponent. It's not to wipe out all their troops. Something like this might actually kill some troops. Something really heavy like a 300 millimeter, those might actually kill some troops. But the truth is the 200 and the 100s, the idea of these is to call them in. After about 10 seconds, you bring in some cheap troops in transports or cars or whatever. And after, right after the artillery has suppressed the opponent, you drive in and you surrender their troops and capture that zone. That's the way to use off map. You don't just off map randomly to try to kill some troops to just because you can. That's a waste of it. You only get a few charges. You don't want to waste them. Make sure you use them wisely and actually make a concentrated push after using your off map. That is the way to use it. Don't go nuts. You don't need three cards of off map. It, that's really just obnoxious. But if you're going to have it, use it wisely and, and plan your attack around it instead of just randomly spamming it wherever you want to kill some units finally we have rocket artillery 
So for the Germans, we have the Nebelwerfers. Okay, so they come in two varieties. We have the usual 150 millimeter version here, which is effective. It's not amazing or anything, but it, it does work for a nice little six burst. It's kind of like its own like miniature off map. It's not going to do anything crazy. It's okay. It kills some stuff. I don't usually suggest taking them unless you want something fun to work with. They have a good range, so you can certainly reach out and get some stuff. You have to bring in supply with these guys. They are completely used without that the fire one volley and that's it they're out of ammo so you need to make sure you have some sort of munitions to bring them back alternatively the other rocket artillery is the neville for 300 millimeter that we can see here in the 28th uh, there we go this is very effective this thing kills stuff this this makes big booms and kills lots of people the russians have a very similar equivalent to this they have the katusha and the andrusia which is the same sort of 150 and then 300 millimeter thing this will kill things so i do suggest if you, if you want artillery, this is the way to go in terms of rocket artillery. This thing will kill stuff. Notice, though, it is a shorter range. So be careful when using this. It's very easy to get caught out with it. You want to move it after you use it. It's a very expensive, high-value target that enemies will counter battery whenever they get a chance. So keep that in mind. So that is the artillery tab in a nutshell. A very useful tab. The main use of it is support. Of course, use your mortars to suppress enemy infantry, use your off map to push into new zones, use your heavier artillery to first make sure that you kill the enemy's artillery, and then use it to pick off support weapons. A very common strategy is to kill the enemy's AA so that you can gain control of the skies, then use your air power to overwhelm them. That's a very effective strategy. Usually artillery's first usage is not actually to bomb the front lines or infantry and things because they just fire so slowly. Heavier artillery takes so long to aim up and actually land hits that it's not super effective at aiming at enemy infantry and things that's more of a job for your mortars that can fire faster and sometimes even your rocket artillery which can fire a little bit faster so those are things to consider when building that artillery tab i hope you enjoyed this video if you did please consider dropping a like on it and subscribing to the channel for more strategy game and steel division 2 content have yourself a fantastic day